Every day that we're alive, you may not have realized it, but you're in a battle. You're in a challenging environment that is always going to work against you to cause you to go away from that which God would have you to do and to seek after to do those things that you want to do, not knowing that if it's your flesh, if it is your own desires, your own will, your own wants that you're pursuing, then because you were born in sin, because you were conceived in sin, and because you are a sinner saved by grace, then your body that you live in, your physical attributes are sinful in nature. They are automatically fighting against you to stop you from accomplishing that which God would have to do in you and wants to perfect through you. He wants to change you from a sinful nature to a godly nature. Now, it's not an attitude of the mind and it's not a perspective of our heart but it's a completeness of the work of God in us. Because only God could save us to begin with. It was only by His miraculous work of redemption in giving His Son as a substitute or propitiation, we say, as a putting in place Himself for yourself so that you would not stand in judgment, but that He was judged as being for your sin. So, in doing that, likewise, God himself gave us the means of salvation which we could have relationship with him. But more than that, God also put in us his spirit so he could begin to work through us and cause us to become more like him as we grow from grace to grace, as we learn to be from merciful to mercy to merciful as we begin to apply forgiveness we've received to forgiveness for others, as we begin to develop love we have felt to love for others, God wants to keep bringing us along to a complete work of His completed salvation in us so that we would be like His Son who died for us. At times, you'll find that you are your own worst enemy. I know I have. And in that, there's a reason why we're told to seek the Lord and to ask His forgiveness and to follow hard after Him and to develop a personal relationship with Him so that He can advise us and encourage us and strengthen us and forgive us and to move us into a place of realization of knowing that God is greater than we are and he is the author of our salvation but he also will be the finisher of our faith in him in Spurgeon I in them if such be the union which subsists between our souls and the person of our Lord how deep and broad is the channel of our communion there is no narrow pipe through which a thread like stream may wind its way it is a channel of amazing depth and breadth along whose glorious length a ponderous volume of living water may roll its floods. That is, through you. Behold, he has set before us an open door. Let us not be slow to enter. This city of communion hath many pearly gates. Every several gate is one of pearl, and each gate is thrown open to the uttermost that we may enter and be assured of welcome. If there were but one small loophole through which to talk with Jesus, it would be a high privilege to thrust a word of fellowship through the narrow door. How much we are blessed in having so large an entrance. Had the Lord Jesus been far away from us, with many a stormy sea between, we should have longed to send a messenger to him to carry him our loves and bring us tidings from his father's house. But seek his kindness and he has built his house next door to yours. Nay, more, he has taken lodging within us, and he tabernacles in poor, humble hearts, so that you may have a perpetual intercourse with him, he talking to you, and you speaking with him. How foolish we must be if we do not live in habitual communion with him. 
When the road is long and dangerous and difficult, we need not wonder that friends seldom meet each other. But when they live together, shall Jonathan forget his David? A wife may, when her husband is upon a journey, abide many days without holding conversation with him. But she could never endure to be separated from him if she knew him to be in one of the chambers of her own house. Why, believer, do you sit at the banquet of wine? Seek the Lord, for he is near. Embrace him, for he is your brother. Hold him fast, for he is your husband. And press him into thy heart, for he is of thine own flesh. God desires to be so real to you and me that irregardless of the place that we think we be, whether in sin or salvation or righteousness or distant or far or any other place that could be in heaven or in hell, as David said, thou art there, so too is the Lord Jesus for you. He is where you are, and he is in you, with you, and abides all through the day and night to comfort you to console you, but more than that, to speak gentle words of encouraging salvation to you, that he has you in the palm of his hands and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So get in the mindset of knowing and realizing that God himself, Jesus right here, as we share, as he sits with me, as he's listening to you, as he's there in your heart, as he wants to speak to you, know that God is real and he is there as real as you allow him to be you can speak and hear and know without any shadow of a doubt or turning that the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go so today just start talking to him just like a friend just like a savior just like God